Hey, hang on, let me get your face up there so I can at least see you. There we go. So All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Barons of Boston podcast. I'm here today with my guest, Susan McConnell. I, of course, am your guest. I'm your host, Joe Zanka, I'm co-founder and COO of On Demand Storage. And uh, Sue, how are you doing? Great, Joe. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm excited to talk to you. Um, you know, obviously, we've known each other for a little while, so this should be really good. And um, you know, I, I'm excited always kind of watching you guys grow and post content um, on LinkedIn and, and all sorts of different social media. So it's been cool because we kind of, it seems like started, um, you know, at least marketing and on-demand storage started around the same time. Yes, marketing did. Yeah. Um, and I started another business prior to that, um, Diversified Sales Solutions, and we're still doing that one to a degree as well. So, um, but so why don't I you tell us a little bit about you? I didn't start as young as you. <laughs> well, um, you know, you have you have some experience on me that probably helped you start your businesses, whereas I started kind of cold. So okay. I, uh, I went into it a little bit, you know, just kind of dove in head first, had to learn. Um, yeah. But it's been good. It's been a fun experience doing it. And, um, and I always learn from talking to people like yourself who are also doing it and, and have um, I do it for a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm thinking I could probably almost learn more from you some days. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us a little bit about marketing and, um, and Diversified. Sure, I will. Um, so actually, I start with Diversified usually because that was the first business. And what we were is an outsourced sales company. We put sales teams on the road for small businesses. We hire, fire, trained, owned, and managed. So it was like sticking a whole sales department on a, a company. Wow. And yet um, you're paying for a part-time sales manager, but yet you have a full-time dedicated person to you who has your business card. So it wasn't seamless. No one would ever know that another company was running your sales organization. So overhead costs lower um, and someone, you know, hitting the streets uh, right away. And that worked out great. Um, a lot of businesses don't, I think, don't understand a sales cycle and that it does take um more than one day to make a sale. Um, so obviously in this day and age, it's almost 12 to 15 touches to actually even get to talk to somebody. So um, the process has been, you know, a lot longer. Um, but through that, we um, meeting with these small businesses is really how marketing was started because you go to talk to some of these small businesses and they're telling you about um, what they want. I want a salesperson. I want this. I want, you know, this brochure. I want this. And I'm like, wait a second, you're talking about marketing. You told me you wanted a salesperson. Do you know the difference? And do you know how many areas of marketing there really are nowadays? Um, so from that sort of frustration is kind of how marketing was developed because mm -hmm. there had to be a way for small companies or even any company to find qualified um, professionals that are, you know, consultants or small agencies to, to help them with um, their projects and, and to have it done right. So that's how marketing was born. No, it's a great tool. I mean, um, and, and there's so many talented people out there and there's so many like, you know, relationships that can be made. And then the beauty of the world right now is with technology, you know, you can do work for a company in San Francisco and be located in Boston and, and have it go as smooth as if you guys lived up the street from each other. So it's, um, I think it's a great idea. And I like, you know, you mentioned that you guys are going national um, as we speak. Yes. Yeah, we have... Um, People out in California now, I think Wisconsin, I think Denver, Ohio, we have Florida, uh, Philadelphia, um, and that's only since um, COVID, to be honest. I think COVID is what started us saying like, this is it, we might as well just take this national, because we were regional in the beginning when we were kind of doing proof of concept. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's, I think it's going to work. I mean, it's a really good idea. And I think that you guys have set a good foundation. So um, congrats on that. Thank you. So we're tell getting, me a little bit about, um, oh, go ahead. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah. That's, it's just, uh, it's brick by brick. You got to yeah. go one day at a time, get a little bit better. And yeah. that's what we're both trying to do, I think. Yes. Yes. So my first question is typically, you know, taking you back a little bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it seems like you started diversified back in 2013. Um, if you could go back to day one of starting that business, what would you tell yourself um, now that you know, you know, kind of what it's been like and where you are today? So there's so much I could probably tell you, <laughs> but I, if I had to bring it down to one thing, which is why I had to actually write these out, because when I read the question, I said, whoa, I could talk, go on for days. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there. but I guess the best advice I give in the beginning is to tell your story to everyone, because you never know who's going to, one, give you great advice or something 
or a spin on something that you're doing that you can be doing differently or whoever is going to be your next customer. So if you tell everyone your story, you're bound to like run into the things that you need, which kind of leads me into like the main thing is ask people for advice and get involved in the entrepreneurial community. Um, there's tons of events around the Boston area and, and all, in every city. Um, I volunteer at um, ENET in Boston and I run two events a year, panel events. And there are so many experts that, that donate their time to these panel events and it's all entrepreneurial based, you know, startups, money, funding, all different things you can do. Um, there's so many people around that are around to help. So that is my kind of roundabout advice, I guess. I really like that answer. No, I think um, yeah. it's so important to mm -hmm. not like be afraid to go out and ask people because I know, for example, you know, as when I started my business, I was 24 and I had two partners so we could bounce ideas off each other, but we were all that age. And so we just learned so much from talking to um, people who had experience, people who have been around the block a little bit. And, and we made our own mistakes, which we learned from, but you can learn very quickly just by not being afraid to ask questions. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to make mistakes too. That's definitely a good one, but definitely at the advice piece is what I would say, because sometimes like you said it, you, you think you know what you're doing, but sometimes just to bounce an idea off somebody who might have a different spin is definitely valuable. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. moving forward a little bit, you know, obviously when you're taking something nationally, um, it seems like you guys are probably utilizing technology pretty well. Um, and technology is obviously a, a, it's a disruptive thing, but it's also something that um, can bring, you know, it's disruptive in the sense that, you know, it can change everything so quickly. Um, and so you got to keep up with it. But, um, you know, what things are, are you seeing, you know, as far as technology disruptions within maybe the marketing world or the sales world? And then, um, you know, I guess another question I like going off of that is, what else are you seeing that holds true despite technology is disruption? So like maybe, you know, in-person relationships or you know, personalized personalization, whatever that may be. It's like actually exactly that. Um, so technology and I would say even sales and marketing, obviously we know because of the internet, there are so many different um, specialties. You have people that are SEO specialists, just like the new thing that you're doing. Um, but I think it's more about automating your processes and that's what I think technology is doing for us. It's making things faster and less manual yep. um, because we're doing it in more volume. Um, so I think automating your business processes and making it easier for you to um, get things done in a timely manner um, is the best uh, with CRMs, um, even Zoom, uh, all the different, um, automation pieces that you can use. There's um, schedulers now that you can use for social media. So you're not really um, having to do it every day, like right. things that can save you time. Um, so on the flip side of that is you're spending all this time automating your processes. You still have to remember that people buy from people and that you still have to have relationships and you still have to connect with people on a, on a you know, person to person basis. And you can't automate that. No, you certainly can't. Um, and that's something that I've definitely seen hold true as well. You know, it's, it's cool because I've been having a lot of conversations with people all over the world. Um, and I think that our service, you know, whether it's on-demand storage or anything else is what they're interested in, but they really end up doing business with you because of, you know, who you are at the end of the day. I mean, they, they, you got to build trust and trust can't be built over, you know, one email or a couple of text messages. It's got to be kind of doing in person or conversations like this, or, you know, getting on the phone multiple times with the, these people until you kind of basically convince them that you're the guy and, um, or you're the girl that they can handle their, their, uh, whatever their issue is. And, and that's, I think something that's hopefully always going to hold true because, um, but the unique thing is you can use technology now to, if you have a sales personality or you have, you know, the ability of something, a service that you, you know, a lot of people could be interested in using, now you can use tech to blast it out there to the world on such a massive level. And it just like will only enhance you. Yeah. So um, when we were talking before we started at um, LinkedIn is the area where I, I use quite a bit of um, being authentic yet learning to automate some of the process. And I do have some, some softwares that are not yet. Um, they're not 
automate to the point where you're you're not actually talking to people, but it, it definitely makes the process faster and easier for you, so you can grow your network a little faster. So yeah, cool. Technology is good. You know, it's um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so my next question is a little bit COVID related. I know we're probably all sick of talking about it, but I like to use a positive spin on it, especially from an entrepreneurial. I've gotten a ton of good answers from this question. Um, people who are getting a good outlook on it. So um, do you have any lessons that you've learned dealing with COVID that you could use as a bit of encouragement to maybe the rest of us that are listening in our audience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so COVID obviously completely shut us down and I'm someone who used to go to probably three to four networking events a week over the last six or seven years. So I've met a lot of people. So what happened there was you lost a lot of your network. You lost a lot of your um, people that you were talking to on a regular basis. And then that um, can, you know, shut down businesses and it can, you know, hamper you. Um, but as we all sort of got through this and obviously zoom, I wish I bought stock. Um, you realize that you can actually grow your network. And for me, I ended up, instead of going to four networking events a week, I'm meeting with 16 people a week. Um, and that's like what almost tripled my production. Oh yeah. Um, and regional, I'm now talking to people national. Um, I'm holding meetings once a week and I'm introducing people that are from the Boston area to people in California. So I guess if you say, oh no, what's gonna happen? it's going to happen. But if you say, how do I make this better? And again, ask other people to help again and you, you figure it out. So yeah, you know, I think keep, keep going or pivot or make a change. Don't like give up, I guess. Is my no, I mean, you can use, um, like you said, networking is a perfect example. It's something that I think a lot of us were doing, um, whenever we could. And you know, someone like you, who's used to doing it, um, a lot, now has been able to, I guess, do a new form of marketing. And so even when, you know, things hopefully do go back to normal soon, um, you'll always have now it's like, all right, well, Hey, you know, if I can't catch you at tonight's networking events, you know, we can hop on a zoom tomorrow and you know, we can be, and you know, it's obviously very tough to network with people who don't live geographically close to you, um, in person, but you can meet with them. Like you said, you can meet with 16 people from all over the world, all over the country um on a weekly basis now which is um which is encouraging because you know it just gives you a new perspective a new outlook on um how things can be done and how you can do business with people all over the place it doesn't have to be you know right in your backyard correct and uh we're bringing on a, a partner and i um, probably shouldn't be talking about this but i'm gonna um he's got a, a networking app that so just um if you're going to local networking events or you're going to networking events in other um, states, it's a collaboration type of thing. So you're going to go to a networking event and you're going to get a thing before it says Joe's here. You need to talk to Joe. So you may, might, might want to find him there. Oh, and wow. it's, it's a whole little, it's a networking that networks. It teaches you how to network. So like there's all these new fun things that are, get developed and um, we're going to be bringing them on as a partner because obviously we do networking events and we want to have our, people and our businesses go to other networking events and it's a way to pull it all together so that people that are not comfortable networking can learn how to be more comfortable because it gives you suggestions and then the guy who developed it developed it for that reason it's very cool that is There's very cool. technology too right <laughs> that's awesome that's unbelievable yeah, very good one. Uh, sounds like a really cool thing I, I would love to check that out when uh, whenever you guys make that partnership yeah we'll be up we'll get it up so my last question for you sue is is a uh, uh, pretty easy one, but it's um, one that I think is super important. I've been doing a lot of reading lately. And um, do you have any books that you would recommend that maybe you've read recently, or maybe something that you've read that um, has transformed your business or your perspective on, on business at all? Yeah. Um, on our website, on our diversified website, there's three books. Um, but I picked this one because I've had this, um, I've been doing reading this one since my kids were little and you were little as well. Um, it's called The Slight Edge with Jeff Olson. And what's kind of cool about it is there's four different um, things I got out of it. And actually, I because I hadn't seen it in a long time and I went to look for the book and it's not in my house, so I had to reorder it. I must have given it to someone. Um, but he's all about kind of like attitude and perseverance. And he said there are two prevalent types of attitudes, entitled and value-driven. A value-driven attitude 
says, what can I do to help you? An entitled attitude says, what have you done for me lately? Mm. An entitled attitude says, pay, pay me more and then maybe I'll work harder. A value-driven attitude says, I'll work harder and then expect you to pay me more. And then this is my favorite one. He says, he says um, for things to be different, I had to do something different. And where's my other favorite one? successful people fail their way to the top. He's got quite a, like, you read this entire book and like every section you have to stop, he has got quotes and it's almost like, it's like everything you do every day, little steps make a giant leap at some point. Absolutely. He's like, he's just a great motivator. It's a very old book and I looked at it um, online and he's done like a few revisions even since I've read it, so. What was the name of it again? It's called The Slight Edge. The slight edge. That's something that I would definitely be ordering. I, I've actually started a little book club around my office. So we're, um, I'm taking all these recommendations and then I'm going to start reading them, but I'm also going to have my um, employees and partners read them too so that we can all well, gain some value together. Yeah, it's a great one. Um, and the other one, I've, uh, I can't remember it. No, I'm just, I forget what it was. Um, Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. I'm sure a lot of people tell you that one, but that's a great one though. It is. I mean, it's uh, it simplifies. I was a part of a book club for many years with that one. Nice. And we read a chapter and someone would tell, say something and I'd be like, what? I didn't even get that out of that. That one's <laughs> neat. But this is, this one's short and sweet and to the point. And it, it's really kind of motivating. And if like, you're looking for something like that, that's what's great about this book. Beautiful. Well, we'll be checking it out. I'll be adding it to the list. Um, yeah. Definitely. So where can, where can people find you um, if they want to get in t contact about, you know, any of your services or talk to you about business? You know what? I have to say, since I do and have, I'm starting a whole new program on LinkedIn and LinkedIn training and workshops and training people how to um, develop relationships and get more business on LinkedIn, I'd say find me on LinkedIn, Susan McConnell on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is like my email mailbox nowadays. Beautiful. So yeah, you just go right there and find that. Um, I'm on that page right now, actually. I was going over some of your stuff before we hopped on the call. So yeah, yeah go check that out. And um, no, thank you so much, too. I mean, this has been a great, um, this has been a great talk. I've, I've enjoyed, um, you know, getting some answers and stuff out of, from you. And, and um, I really appreciate you coming on. No, thank you very much. And good luck. Yeah, thank you so much. So you take care. All right. Bye.